This is Bob Friday, CTO co-founder at Miss Systems. In this section, what I'd like to give you is kind of an update on the journey we are on to really build a solution that can answer questions on par and solve problems in real time as a real time domain expert, right? And I think we gave you an update last year. And when you look at the journey we're on, you know, as I talked about before, beyond just AI, right? And I know there's a lot of skeptics in here, right? How many AI skeptics do I have in here? Okay. <laughs> okay. I will tell you, for all you AI skeptics, I will tell you, in your lifetime, you will see a self-driving car, and you will see a self-driving network. For I mean, what For what it's worth, Bob, not to derail you, I don't think we're, I won't speak for everybody, but if I had to, just throw a guess, it's not AI that anybody is, you know, skeptical of. It's just the overabundant marketing, getting it pushed mm. in the <laughs> as the savior for everything. I think we're all good with AI. Nailed it. It's the way it's getting, the way it's getting right. kind you of abused in marketing. Well, I, I, uh, that's why I'm not using the term AI, right? I'm here to build a solution that can answer questions on par with domain experts. It's next generation uh, wireless. You know, that, oh, now I, I may not live to see this, but you guys will definitely be around to see the self-driving car. <laughs> now I will tell you though, you know, when you look at the, what we're building here, right? The components that we're using to build Marvis right now, our customers are finding tremendous value in components, right? You know, if I did nothing, if I didn't do any AI at all, I'd have customers buying this, this buying the real-time distributed cloud architecture, right? And we have some very large customers right now you know, they really didn't care about it. All they cared about was this, because it brought them that API automation, fewer bugs, a, just a better way to support software going forward. Uh, so I think the message here is, you don't have to wait for the self-driving network or the self-driving car to get value of what we're building right now. You know, when you look at the very front end, last year we gave you an update, you know, the data component of Marvis is a key part that basically feeds all the data into the AI, into our Marvis machine, right? You know, and my analogy is just like wine, right? Great wine starts with great grapes. You know, all this marvelous AI starts with great data. You know, and that's why I actually decided to build an AP, because I had to make sure I can get the data out of the edge of the network. You know, and when you actually look at this missed AP, what's really going on there, we're sending back data every two to 10 seconds like we've always done, right? Everybody's been doing that for years. We send it back and we do stuff with it. The thing that we've added to missed here is we're basically sending back what I call asynchronous user state events, right? For everyone connected to this network, we're basically keeping track of that user state. Uh, back in my aerospace days, it was really about just keeping track of the AP, right? I was just here to help you manage APs. Here, we're actually trying to help people take care of that user experience and what's going on in the device, because to your point, right, most of the problems are not wireless per se, right? It's usually on the client side, and then if, you know, the other side of the problems are somewhere back on the net, on the, the wire WAN side, something's going wrong back there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other key component to Marvis is really around these AI primitives. You know, because what we're really doing is we're taking unstructured log files, right? We're taking data from these access points and we're adding structures to it that a domain expert like yourself could understand, right? These are all our time to connect, roaming capacity, what we call SLE metrics with classifiers. You know, so I need to build this, even for my AI machine, I need to get the same structure that you as a human would have to be able to understand. And we have customers who just see value in that. This, that, this is what provides them more visibility and they're using it to get better troubleshooting today as is, without even the... So, talking on your troubleshooting, how close are we to the point where I can give, if this happens, you can do this to this, Say, for instance, like a DHCP error where you just need to have the DHCP table wiped. He couldn't help himself. I mean, I, mean, I, mean it's, I think it's great that we're getting all of this data. You're funneling this data, and you're like, yeah. boom. Hold that thought for problem. five minutes. Oh, okay. All right, good. Go through yeah, that. Right. Right. I, I could feel Sudhir breathing down my neck. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to jump into demos, and you'll get more of it than you'll be able to add. Yeah. Uh, but I think the update, and, you'll, and Sudhir will give you an update here shortly on it what other AI primitives we were adding to the uh, Marvis. Um, last year was mostly about the wireless side. You'll see us start adding more primitives around the wired side. You know, what's going on between the AP and the internet. The other key component is really around this data science toolbox. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time trying to help you understand, you know, separate marketing hype and versus AI reality. 
you know, and when you actually build something like Watson for Jeopardy and self-driving network stuff, it's not just one algorithm, right? There's a whole bunch of different things going on under the hood to really get this solution to answer questions on par with the domain expert. And the next component, which we're basically releasing, is really around what I call conversational UIs, right? This is all that natural language processing. Um, and this is really just recently available, right? This is basically all because of neural networking that we actually now can actually have decent natural language processing, Alexa stuff that actually kind of functions now. And what this is really changing is around how you get data out of the system, right? You know, in the past, it was a lot of log file, dashboards, you were searching around for it. This is gonna make it much easier for you to extract the data you want without having to do all this dashboard swiveling chair. So before I let Sidira get back up here, this chart here is really trying to help you see the difference between what I call marketing AI versus real AI. Uh, and when you look at this chart, what you want to kind of keep an eye out is on this axis here. This is the, if you look, if someone claims to be building an AI solution, you kind of want to look like, what are the algorithms you'll find behind most real AI solutions? And what you should, what you should look for when you look under the hood. This axis here is really a time axis. Um, this is kind of highlighting the fact of, you know, why is AI now relevant? Five years ago, we didn't hear so much about it. You know, 20 years ago when I did my masters, I actually was doing neural networks when I was at Metricom, trying to build a neural network that could basically decode things, right? I was building radios. I thought, well, I'll use a neural network to do that. The thing that has really changed is in the last five years, we have gotten to the point where we can actually build neural networks that actually do interesting things. We can build big enough and deep enough things, you know, that can do this image processing and then this text processing and language processing. They're finally at a point they're doing something that's interesting that we care about. So this is the other thing you want to look like. You know, these algorithms have been around for a long time. I was using this 20, 15 years ago. What is new is this neural network stuff. And this is what's really making a difference in a lot of different verticals. And this is what you should keep an eye on because this is what's going to start making things change. And this chart here is trying to highlight when Sudhir goes through his demos, when you see time series anomaly detection, that's all because of what they call LSTM RN neural networks, right? That's the time series stuff going on. When you look at this NLP stuff, that's because of this here, right? That's because of these neural network deep learning stuff. When we talk about RM, we're kind of reinventing RM because we're leveraging something they call reinforcement learning. You know, on the location side, you know, what, what I was able to do that I wasn't able to do 15 years ago is actually do unsupervised learning, right? And this is the manual calibration. When you put up these location networks, we used to always have to walk around and calibrate them and everything. You don't have to do that anymore because we now have enough horsepower to actually do this on the back end. Mutual information is actually a data mining technique. You know, this is basically big data stuff. This is basically looking across all the information in your network, right? This device type, device model, DHCP. You may have 50 different network, I don't want to say features, but network things, and you're trying to figure out why your SLE metric failed, and you're trying to figure out which one of these network things actually caused a problem. So when you see Sidir do uh, feature discovery in the demo, that's because mutual information now works. I have a question about that. Are you using data from all of the different networks that you're managing, um, or are you just looking into each customer can look into their own data? Interestingly enough, yeah, so there is global like in location right now, right? I have visibility across all devices, right? So I can tell you how well an Android here is BLE versus an iPhone now, because I have that data across all, all those devices. Uh, if you look at Marvis, you know, interestingly enough, if if iPhone 10 has a problem, you know, it's almost like crowdsourcing. We will know it immediately because when people start asking us questions, you know, everyone who's using the network, it almost comes out in marvelous, right? Because we almost see what are the top five questions that are being asked. When you guys have the visibility across all those networks, is there any customers that throw up security concerns about that? Kind of going off of what he said earlier. How, how does that work? I mean, do all customers have to sign off on that or do some customers say, you know, I don't, you know, so, so it's, it's actually just metadata, right? Okay. Uh, I'll give you another example. Uh, it's, it's literally where none of the user-specific stuff ever gets out of an order. Sure. We have ironclad, uh, you know, uh, multi-level security stuff there. Uh, it's, it's metadata saying, hey, uh, uh, a very easy one that lands for all of you. We have 
a global database of all our firmwares and which firmware rebooted how many times across our universe. Sure. Right? Customers don't care about that uh, per se because it's it's metadata. It's nothing to do with how many APs they have or what APs they That's have. All. But I would just say some sometimes wouldn't metadata correlate to maybe you know some kind of device fingerprinting just as, a, as an as an example. And then I don't know. I'm just saying, is there some customers that are just more concerned even with giving up that metadata? We have not hit a customer like the firmware, right? We haven't had any customers complain about us keeping track of bugs by firmware, right? Panics. Yeah. Right? So the, I, we haven't seen that problem yet, but I hear what you're saying, and that's why it's all, you know, the data we do look at is all autonomized, right? There's, not, there's nothing to trace it back to a, a customer. So on the reverse side of that, I know, Bob, you've showed before how the system kind of learns from different devices being in and out. Are you able to take from your different customer bases and be able to use that data from, like say, PetSmart and correlate it to add it to a... Yeah, I would, mm -hmm. I would say example would be like natural language. Yeah. Right, I mean, natural language is learning every week. Every week we're getting questions being asked for it and every week we're retraining it, right? You know, because every week we may get 100 questions and 10 of them I can't answer, right? And so basically we will retrain Marvis to say, okay, you know, when you see this question, here's the intent, right? This is where this question fits. So that's an example of where machine learning does make a difference, right? It will get better every week. It'll get slightly better. You know, a question that it couldn't answer last week, it'll be able to answer this week. So, so what about uh, exposing that data? So if you have a, a new driver, for example, new Windows update, you know, pushes a new wireless driver out and you begin seeing across all of your, your sites that this is a problem, is that is any of that data exposed to customers so that... You'll see that, yeah. So, so that you don't have to hit Marvis, you know, you're, you're just hitting kind of a yeah. common dashboard. Of <laughs> Time for common. severe demo. <laughs> yes, uh, the answer is yes, right? So, so, so let's actually, you know, in the interest of time, um, let me actually just dive into the demos. There's four things we're launching today. Uh, and we're very excited. I think, you know, um, personally, being in the industry 20 years, I can tell you, this is a watershed year for the industry when AI is, is going to change. You know, AI is not a fad that, uh, you know, one company is pushing, right? Everybody is talking about it, right? Why, in my definition, AI is not artificial intelligence. AI starts with actionable insights, right? What can I take action on that we need to go learn and that I don't have to learn myself manually that a system can teach me? AI is actionable insights. And then the second one, the Nirvana second step of AI, AI is autonomous networks, right? AI is self-driving networks. So that's where we want to get to. So, so today we're very, very proud to, to basically uh, launch Marvis, uh, um, uh, Marvis uh, the virtual assistant, with much more enhanced NLP, a uh, lot more questions that we can answer. Um, the second one, I would say that, that I think, again, another one in, in our industry, this is going to, we're going to remember this as something that we all needed but we didn't have before today, is, is anomaly detection. But anomaly detection is not alerting and notification. I had a customer uh, that sat me uh, before, I went for a meeting and a presentation uh, a few moons ago uh, and, and basically said, you know, before you start, I want you to just see my inbox, right? He said, he opened up and he opened up his inbox and said, I have 5,000 emails from Cisco Prime today. What do you think, where do you think I should start, right? Alerting in our industry became nuisance. So we are making a very bold commitment. First time in the industry, where we're going to detect anomalies, and if we find an anomaly on our customer's network, we will automatically open a support ticket on ourselves and call the customer before they call us. We are so confident that we are near zero false positives. I couldn't have done that if, if we weren't so confident that when we alert you there's an anomaly in the network, uh, that it is a real one, right? And, and why is this important? Because when all the mobile app guys, I want you to play more games and spend more time on their apps, what I want you to do is actually spend less time on the missed dashboard. I want all of our customers, if today you spend 30 minutes on the dashboard, I'd rather you spend 10. 
I'd rather you spent five. So if we can eliminate and liberate you from troubleshooting and operations, we can enable you to deliver services, right? And that's why, you know, a lot of our customers, you know, I have a customer advisory board with some of our large customers, just amazing who's who of names. And they're like, Sudhir, we got to get this one right. I don't care how long it takes. And so you'll see the demo of anomaly detection today. It's coming to all of our networks today. Um, and by the way, all of it is launching, uh, you know, today for our customer, it's going to, it's going to be, uh, a lot of this is going to be in the dashboard, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow for, uh, for some of our customers that have the, uh, um, have this enabled. And uh, but basically by the end, within two weeks, all of this is launching. AI driven RRM is already running for some very large customers. We've broadened the service levels. Today, you know, his, for the last two, three years, we, our service levels monitoring was coverage was good, capacity was good, throughput was good. Now we added VAN, right? Uh, we added actually Ethernet monitoring. It doesn't matter whose van you're using, doesn't matter what router you're using, we're going to be able to show you and correlate to, hey, you know, how was the latency on the van? How does it compare to the users, right? So we'll show you a little bit of that. Without, with that, you know, um, I was going to do a, a, a five-minute intro to Mr. Dashboard, uh, but in the, in the interest of time, I think... Uh, uh, I should skip this, uh, I, I think, uh, for the interest of time. So, so this video will post online. This is just a, a run through of what is currently there. Uh, I'd say the net new thing we, we, uh, you'll see in our dashboards is the van SLE, but all of the other service levels have been there. So uh, let me actually go in and talk about, uh, that was for customers that were net new to MIST. So now uh, let's, let's, uh, let's actually talk about what's new that is launching today. What's new that's launching today is a, is a, is a significantly upgraded NLP engine, uh, you know, much, more, uh, much more questions and queries. Um, Sam, you know, show, show channel utilization will be there now. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, so um, you know, the, the idea is for the, for when, when, when Marvis first came out, uh, you know, six months ago, um, there was a much, much longer cycle of how fast we were answering questions. Now the commitment is weekly, you'll see new questions come up, right? So what does that mean? So, what, so some of these questions we were able to answer before, and so now this new interface, what you're gonna see is, let me say, if I wanna go troubleshoot a site, right? And this is where, um, you know, it comes down to uh, your, your question on, what actionable insights can you drive me to, right? And so uh, I will actually uh, keep skipping just to uh, keep myself with time. Um, and, you know, let's talk about, and I'll maybe pause here, right? So, so um, what actionable insights we can drive? So let's take this example, right? So I asked the question of Marvis saying, you know, what was wrong at this site? This site's been complaining. Ooh, shit. Uh, this site's been complaining about problems um, uh, for the last seven days. What can you tell me about it, right? Um, and, and you know what, actually, let me, let me show this one thing. 100% mm -hmm. of the problems that are coming into the missed support ticket system today goes through Marvis, right? They always, the support guys, if it's a network troubleshooting ticket, they will always start with Marvis, right? So they'll ask Marvis, hey, what is wrong with something, right? And then they will evaluate Marvis and say, you know, for the resolution of this support ticket, did I have to go into the AP? Uh, sometimes they do. That's a bad answer, right? Because, you know, why should people have to go into the AP to get any data? Did I have to go into the bowls of the missed cloud to extract some data to ultimately resolve the problem? Yeah, sometimes they do, but a bad answer. Then, did I find the answer in the missed dashboard somewhere? Okay, that's a reasonable answer. That means you can hunt and peck within our dashboard and get to the answer, right? But ultimately the nirvana is, did Marvis get the answer right? Or did at least Marvis have the data, right? So our crusade today, and this is the actual chart and we're, we're, we're putting ourselves out there a little bit, right? Our mm -hmm. crusade today is these two. So when we have, when our support guys talk, uh, you know, come in and say, hey, this week, Sudhir, we had too many support tickets where I had to go into the AP. Bob, you want to add something? No, oh, this is my, hey, guys, we're on the playing field. We're not playing wireless Jeopardy championship level yet. By next year, we come here, we'll be playing championship level with you guys. 
right? Mm -hmm. If you've ever watched the, uh, the, the, the evolution of IBM Watson, you'll actually see Watson initially struggles a lot, struggles a lot, struggles a lot, and ultimately gets there. And, and that is all about learning, right? So what I do on a weekly, daily basis is I sit down with our support team and look at these purple tickets. Why did you have to go to the AP? And then we say, okay, how can we actually get that problem solved and brought it into VNA? I'll give you an example. This enterprise customer that I had in the very second slide, uh, three and a half weeks into their deployment, about 2.30 in the afternoon, they called us and said, Sudhir, the MIST network is down. The Cisco side, they haven't done the, uh, the rest of the buildings with MIST yet, is all up, MIST network hard down. We can't connect to the Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. Right, so uh, we went in, I had a, uh, I have a small uh, you know, a Honda Elantra, I fit a ladder in there and a bunch of APs in there assuming I'm getting thrown out, you know, I'm gonna try some new APs, whatever it is. And we were there about three hours and then ultimately we came in and the conclusion was some guy looped their wired network in the building, in the building we were in, right? Uh, and it happens, happens to the best of them. This is a Silicon Valley enterprise and a very reputed IT team. Um, and uh, our system, our AP, was telling us, hey, I'm hearing my own packets back. And we have a, a, a message for the call, reflection. I'm hearing reflection. Something is wrong. From minute one, we were seeing that message. But the customer kept telling us, no, 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 but my Cisco sites are not down. It's just your site that is down. So I don't believe it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's my wired network, <laughs> right? And so ultimately, we finished the day with beer and, and everybody was happy. But um, now, because of that, when you loop your network with missed APs on him, there is a message that comes in and says, hey, you have a loop in the network, <laughs> right? We live and we learn. And that's what Marvis is. And that's the crusade here. This particular week, I would not declare that we are 70% of the questions were answered by Marvis, but that week it happened to be where we took a, a lot more support tickets where, yeah, Marvis pointed me in the right direction or actually had the right answer. So we're getting there. Some weeks it's not as good, right? You know, I, the, the week before, 40%. But this is what you know, the crusade is to get to championship level. Now with that context, uh, let me just uh, quickly run through this. Um, this demo on what it actually is telling us uh, here, right? Here what it's saying is, hey, I have some throughput problems, I have some coverage issues, and I had an AP reboot, right? So let's pause there and see, you know, what does that mean to us, right? What did we say here? What we are saying is, hey, I have some WAN issues at this particular site. First of all, before we go into what it is saying, let's talk about what it is not saying. What it is not saying is, Marvis said, I looked at your radius server, everything is good. I looked at your DHCP server, everything is good. I looked at your DNS, everything is good, right? By not pointing out those things, it's telling me your client connectivity is great, radius wasn't down, DHCP wasn't down, right? And so by eliminating stuff I didn't have to hunt and peck, we all already added value. Now, let's see, can we get as close to the real answer as possible, right? Again, it's all about saving time. If I can get your, you know, 30, yeah, sorry. So question on that, given, given what you just described, the things that it's not saying as well, is there now or going to be some kind of, this is all the things that Marvis tried right. for? Actually, yeah, what, what we got feedback, Lee, was, you know, can you just have some green and red buttons here saying, boy, you know, DHCP was green, yeah. instead of me having to assume that you did the math for me, and so the green and red buttons are coming, right? Uh, and so it will actually, the, they will say, authentication problems, no, you know, DHCP problems, no. But, so, so what, what we've first done is eliminated what is all good and not pointed it out here. And then we said, you know what, you are having some van issues. And so now, uh, that's, that's good, so now let's go look at, you know, was it happen, con happening continuously? You know, uh, uh, wh what, what clients did it affect? You know, when did it affect? And what is all that impact, right? So that's what this investigate button is, right? So the investigate button is gonna say, um, you know, let's go look further and see what was the evidence you've gathered to come up with this conclusion. Right? So some of this investigation was there last year, uh, but what we've done now is actually added much more uh, uh, data into it because as we get feedback from you all, uh, you know, what matters in these types of troubleshooting, troubleshooting scenarios, that's what's making in, right? So we're saying, you know, there are a few times uh, when throughput was not, by the way, this is predictive throughput. 
So, uh, and when I come to the anomaly detection section, I'll tell you why predictive is so important. Again, as an old Chromogen uh, wireless guy, this da AI data science stuff is mind blowing sometimes. And so, you know, I realized you actually have to predict to detect anomalies. You don't actually just, uh, you know, detect a average, a moving average, and, and that doesn't work. So now here, this is powerful. This is net new. This is where we're saying, you know what? From a throughput perspective, we couldn't deliver throughput for a bunch of clients, but the guys that had the, 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 the most red there are probably the top three clients that were complaining, right? What is the bane of our existence? You know, people will say, hey, the APs are up and running, the controllers are up and running, but there is this five users that are tweeting that the network sucks, right? How do we get to them? And that's what this is pointing to is which clients are having issues, which operating systems are having issues. You know, here is an example, you know, did somebody change config that caused some of this degradation? We're putting and stitching that story together. As best we can, are we absolutely there? Probably not, a lot more to be said and done. Uh, but again, it goes back to the efficacy percentage, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so this is a point where like, this is mutual information. Under the hood, this is happening because there's a bunch of big data mutual information stuff crunching away in the background. Right, and this is, yeah. Is there a loop that continually updates that? Sort of like a check loop that says, hey, you know, we we're learning this and then we go back and we look at it. I mean, is there any, is there any type of loop to there, there, there is. that and, happens? Right, because if we don't continually monitor, then we, we rely on humans to watch for stuff and ask questions. We don't want you to ask questions. The questions is, man, I have to now troubleshoot this thing and, and, and whatever happened, that's when you ask questions. But ideally, we alert you because we are watching for it. And I'm gonna show you how the alerting is gonna work. Yeah. And so this is actually a very similar construct. You'll see the same construct across all the system. This is me troubleshooting an AP. And one of the things when we, uh, when we, when we launch this troubleshooting an AP thing is once you get to the investigate button, uh, I, I will go into the full screen here. Once you get to the investigate button, in the, on the AP, there was much more people were saying. People were saying, did all the clients drop off at the same time? Did it impact only a, a select set of clients, right? So in the AP, again, this is a predictive model for that AP. It's saying, you know, 70% of the time it was VAN issues. And then when I get to the correlation, similar format, which clients on that AP were affected. And then here, this is every event on that AP for the last seven days, right? Every state transition of every client, right? We put it together for you. And if you said, I, I want to know the three guys that had some uh, authorization failures, you click on that and you have it, right? And we began, we're trying to stitch as much data as possible for you. Uh, sorry, was that a question? Oh. No, no, okay, okay, sorry. So, so that, th again, um, he here's a, a convoluted way of getting to channel utilization, but this is the AP's channel utilization. Um, and again, you know, 2.4 gig band, five gig band, we're watching this every minute, the AP channel utilization, yeah. In this demo, how many APs are you actually? This is just our office. Okay. Um, this, is, uh, this is about seven APs. And again, as I said. Uh, is it still gonna be that snappy? If it I will be. 6, Th that's APs? the whole point of this. No, forget 6,000. You know, we're, uh, one of our customers is gonna be 20,000 APs. The 13,000 AP network, again, I'd love for you guys to talk to them if you're, if you're gonna go there they will tell you the Marvis question response just as fast, just as snappy. Because here, here's a fundamental founding philosophy we've had, and we incur this cost independent of our, uh, what we get paid. We always have 40% headroom on our cloud across every service, right? There is no way you can spike our system to go uh, suddenly become slow down on you because we always maintain a 40% headroom at the entire universe level, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no way one customer could suddenly spike my entire cloud more than 40%. And if that happens, then we, we take that as a new baseline, right? And that's why the, this whole system is designed to be responsive like that, right? So, um, before you go on, yeah. just, just a clarification. Could you scroll over the circle in the 2.4 because the red and the green is really throwing me off. So, so this is 2.4, this is five gig. And you're using red to denote five gig? 
Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Just, just okay. uh, 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 we will flip that. Yeah. <laughs> Take that feedback, no red circles. This is the better band. I mean, I was starting to say, okay, your two, four channel utilization is fantastic, but I'm assuming your five is horrid. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the other way around. Actually, you can see the 2.4 is at uh, is at 76%. We hammer on. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming the tinier the circle, the, the better, the, the lower the utilization. The lower the use. Okay. Yeah. And you'll yeah. see in the RRM demo, it gets much more fancier than this. Um, so uh, I'll keep going. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, so, so beyond, you know, the troubleshooting, the troubleshooting is where the AI magic is happening, right? Um, uh, and, you know, here's an example. Here's a query that one of our <laughs> users wanted. They just want, who are the guys that are complaining in this site? Literally, you ask a question, unhappy users at my office, and by design, it'll come up with people having connection problems, uh, right? And, it, and literally, we just brought that chart up. Every question you ask, if Marvis doesn't know today, we're going to work on it. 100% of the questions, they're actually constantly churning. Every week, you will see new answers come through, right? Now, here, you can say, you know what? Who are the people that are having coverage issues at this site? Right? And now you can literally get to the exact users that are having coverage problems without you hunting and pecking and asking troubleshooting questions, whatever. Right? You can ask worst users for roaming, as an example. Right? So, so all kinds of very interesting questions are now possible with Marvis. The NLP is purely to make it simpler. It's not to meant to, be, to make it cute. Right? There is a complete structured query language that you can get all these answers without having to know the exact NLP command if you don't know that. Right? So we actually, if you go, this button here is a, is a structured query language. And I'll show you a, a couple of examples around that. Right? Uh, and in the interest of time, uh, you know, we just added a, 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 a feature where you could say, locate this guy, wherever he is. Across my 13,000 APs, across 1,600 sites, you can ask the question, locate Sudhir. It'll just give you an answer. How are you finding that correlation between Sudhir? Like it's, it's just, uh, uh, the, that's my host name. Okay. Yeah, so we- There's only one Sudhir. <laughs> 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 it could be either to that one X, or it could be some sort it, of like yeah. correlation between MAC address and user that's- we, It's, it's so. dot one X, uh, it's, it's machine name, okay. overridden by dot one X, um, if nothing else becomes MAC address. Do you have some history there? Like, how, can you go far back, or is we it don't, tell you where it is now? What we don't do is uh, is we don't, you know, uh, traverse and transfer these names across organizations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where people yeah, yeah. will have will yeah, yeah. have some serious issues with us. Uh -huh. uh, we do not do that. Uh, but within an organization, we keep this data for about thirty days, right? All these Marvis, Marvis, a lot of these Marvis queries you can actually have for thirty days, right? So you you mentioned a lot about predicting and that being uh, yes, fundamental. Yes, let me just do this right now. Okay. Yeah. So predicting is coming here, right? So this is anomaly detection, right? So, so let's talk about, thank you. Uh, what do we do with anomaly detection, right? So what we have to do with anomaly detection, uh, by the way, you know, Bob has a master's in neural networks, and I, I found that out as, while we were preparing for this presentation. We had no idea. Uh, and, and you know, I did, uh, you know, mean, mean average and median. That's the most I did in my master's. Uh, so, so that's what we were doing before. And so um, what, what we have to do is we have to baseline and understand seasonality and understand time of day and day of week, right? Otherwise, we'll be throwing up a lot of errors if you said, you know, mm -hmm. hey, set a limit saying, if ever this, this SLE was below 80%, call me, it'll be calling you a lot of times. And when it doesn't matter, because sometimes it could be like that, right? Mm -hmm. So seasonality and baselining. So once you have that, what happens is, literally what the algorithm does is it's predicting what this SLE would be for the next 10 minutes or the next one hour. We can actually predict an entire day because we've learned your network. And that's the piece of neural, neural networks. Yeah, Bob? I mean, the key here is that people appreciate is Underneath this is there's what they call an LCM RRN neural network. And this is why we're getting down to much lower false positives. There's been other ways of trying to solve this problem, they just haven't been as good. And that's right. why the, some of this, what they call these algorithms are making a difference. Right, this was and so, very so it, and that's, that's foundational. Until we got this again, the, uh, in the first 10 engineers we've hired, three of them were data scientists at MIST, and, and this was so foundational for how the company was built, is as we can predict what a certain SLE would be, 
Then there are two types of anomaly detection. One where we can take automated action. One where we cannot, right? If a DHCP server is out for lunch, something nothing we can do about. But we can alert people, wake them up in the middle of the night, right? And then if, uh, if there is a coverage issue, there's a capacity issue, there's an RF issue, you're going to see in the next demo on RRM how we take that into account, right? Anomaly detection has been running in production for our customers for probably nine months on coverage and capacity, and we've taken that into RRM. And I'll show you that in the very next demo. But this particular demo, quick, the story quick here, here, quick question sorry, yeah. while we're here. So it's really easy to get super excited about this, and it's very impressive. What do you say when somebody says, but what about my switching? That's right, that's right. So, so for, um, you, you'll see some of the things that we're talking about. Um, uh, the example, the Ivy League that, uh, uh, that we won, uh, it actually, this was a big deal for them because uh, we walked in with Juniper and we won that deal as Juniper plus Mist, right? And, uh, and, and so there's, there's more in the AI for IT conversation. We are bringing a lot of data together natively, and you'll see in the very next demo, we already know what switch we're connected to, what port we're connected to. There's a lot we can deduce from just listening, and which is, you'll see in this very next demo, on the switching side and the WAN side and the firmware side, but uh, there's a much bigger consortium. We just launched an integration with Palo Alto, uh, with VMware, with Juniper, and that's the AI for IT uh, bigger, bigger play as well. So just to continue on on that, and you guys are just saying Palo Alto, you, Juniper, uh, when are we getting a single dashboard to control it all? Uh, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, hopefully, if I don't run out of time, you will see. That is the demo there. Related um, to that, um, since you're predicting these, you see these events happen. Are you going to trigger events like uh, packet captures on the switches or blocking of ACLs on Palo Alto? Is that yeah. where you see this going? Yes, we, we definitely see that going there. And, and it, there's, a, there's an early, early demo of that here. So, so what, what is happening here is we can, a human could, Bob would always say, if a human can tell the machine, uh, it's, it's much harder for the machine to tell, but, but it, we found out is a human, if somebody was sitting and staring at this thing, they say, oh yeah, something went really bad. But we don't want you to be sitting and staring stuff. We don't want knock to be all these big screens. We want systems to wake people up when there is a need for it, right? So once we've determined this, and uh, I'll give you a, a true story. 12.05 uh, AM, we got woken up. A large distribution center down. It was in London, and and we we were we were on this thing, right? We saw their SLE go from a you know a something 98% to to zero uh, uh, um, very quickly, right? So we woke up. We said, okay, cool. There is an anomaly, and then we said, okay, now let's go investigate this, right? So let's go investigate uh, what really happened. If, once you click on the investigate button, it takes you right back to Marvis. Again, uh, the conversational interface is where a lot of this is going to be done. And so first thing it said was, hey, you have some authorization failures. Remember, distribution center down, it was telling me, suddenly I have authorization failures, right? I was, everything was good at 12 o'clock, 12.05, you know, things were not good. So then we came in and we looked at, is it just authorization or what DHCP or I mean, just my network just go to hell in a handbasket, right? It, it turns out it was just authorization. Then we looked at, okay, you know, uh, what type of devices were failing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in their case, <clears throat> turns out it was just their Windows devices, right? So, huh. The Windows devices were just failing, all started at 12 o'clock. This is a much smaller network. That was a real network. Um, and then we basically came to, OK, so it's not network down. It's Windows devices down. OK, that's a start. Uh, to, to basically finish the story is once we found that out, that it was Windows devices and it was affecting certain set of clients, um, then uh, it came down to we went to, uh, we do something we call dynamic packet capture for clients that are failing. Already, any, from the first failure on, there's a packet capture in the cloud, right? And so we, we looked at the dynamic PCAP. Um, turns out, true story, Fortune 20 Enterprise, they pushed certificates to these devices with the wrong year in them, uh, in an old year. Nice. So by 12.35, we were back in bed. They knew exactly what the problem was. But if you were on the, on the receiving side, on the shop floor there, you know, good luck trying to convert certificates that are old and, and uh, you know, devices that are not connecting and moving all of them back, right? 
Um, but that's what anomaly detection is about. It's about catching those types of scenarios. In this particular video, actually, what was happening was a config change was causing some of the, uh, the failures here, right? And, and that's the whole point. Here's another, here's another example. This one I think somebody asked about. This was, you know, most of the issues that were happening. So, so uh, the large community college that I was talking about that has 1,000 APs with MIST, um, they had an area in the, in, the, in the school where when users would walk in that area, they'd be like, man, the Wi-Fi just doesn't work well. Other places I can connect happily. Here, it's not good. So as you can imagine, a good network engineer is like, OK, is there interference there? Is there channel utilization? You know, all kinds of stuff we did. And ultimately, you know, uh, what we found out is you know, we didn't have this then, but now we have this. We queried the system. And the three APs that were running in that part of the building basically were running an older firmware, and the APs were rebooting. Right? And, uh, and so now, based on that learning, we actually launched mutual information on firmware versions. And so when you hit investigate here and, and go to the correlation, you will actually basically see, OK, you, know, you have you know, 1,000 APs. Most of them are happy and healthy. But the devices running this particular firmware version are the ones where all the failures are congregated. Right? And so now I can tell you these firmwares uh, are, are in your enterprise. You should never have disparate firmwares, but happens all the time to the best of us, and that, that was their issue, right? So um, similarly, uh, you know, I think Lee was talking about a very similar scenario with, uh, with switching, right? We now have the, <clears throat> have the ability to look at switches and see if the APs that were failing here, there was the water bottle here. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. Sorry, if the APs that were failing were on which switch, right? And so a lot of times we find that you know, when somebody calls in, usually uh, you know, when it's an AP reboot, we sometimes find it's the, it's the switch that rebooted. So how are you getting that information from the switch? LLDP. OK. Yeah. Do you have a, a maintenance mode like for when you know, your customers know they're going to be taking stuff down? Or there is no more? maintenance mode. No. Gmail doesn't tell you when they're, they're upgrading their email servers. So with this auto-generated ticket thing, is it just going to open a bunch of tickets for the customer? They'll just close them? or It'll open a ticket on MIST, right, we, in the customer org. Okay. But it'll open us. We call them. Okay. Right. Uh, again, I think that's the paradigm change is we, in many ways, even though we don't um, you know, charge like a managed service provider. We are their managed service provider supporting our MSP uh, partners and customers, right? And so. Anyway, this is again another learning that we had. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep moving because uh, uh, Jeff's waving me off here. Um, there's, you know, I'll give you another example. Uh, again, uh, this one was fascinating. We replaced a ruckus network at a company that's uh, probably somewhere, yeah, actually just literally two miles this way, large networking company, and um, replaced their ruckus APs in a, in a corporate building. Got missed in, and they're like, ah, oh, the Wi Fi still sucks. And I was like, okay. Uh, we went and looked at the SLEs, and we said, you know, DHCP problems. You're, you have some DHCP problems. They said, uh, no, 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 we don't have any DHCP problems. We, we have, we're a networking company. We run this very well. Right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we ran this command. It just said, show me the DHCP servers at, at your site. And they looked at this list and said, whoa, those are not our DHCP, DHCP servers. We said, no, 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 they're serving IP address on your network. They're, that's covered for DHCP, right? And so turns out, their lab network was routed to their corporate network. Um, and so the guys were getting an IP address, would have five bars on Wi-Fi, and can't get anywhere to the internet. Wi-Fi sucks, right? <laughs> Literally, as soon as that was fixed, it was like breathing oxygen into the room, right? <laughs> Wi-Fi was working. Did they put the rockets back? Nope, they didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> I knew, kid, that we were not going to put <laughs> So, so uh, again, you know, a lot of very interesting queries uh, that you can ask. But, but the point of this slide, I'm going to skip some of this uh, demo piece. This one is interesting. This is is very powerful. This is the, now I'm not in the natural language piece, but we're in the um, we're in the uh, sort of structured query language. Um, basically, what I'm asking is, hey, show me clients by uh, you know, certain client events, but with uh, you know, authorization failures or 
people that are having a specific problem. You can say, show me clients that are having fast roaming failures with 11R. You can say, show me clients that are having you know, DHCP init failures during the two hours that I'm troubleshooting for, right? Just, just this opens up, again, literally now, if I count the combinations of questions you can ask, we're into the millions, right? We will not let people market that, so, so no. <laughs> we, we will not start counting you know, arbitrary numbers, but you know, all kinds of failure scenarios. You could just ask the question, who are the clients? Just and, in a question format. In the question format. And, yeah. you, and you guys are collecting this info, obviously, yes. and then adding that in so that yeah. you can be more aware when these questions do come. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Every day, we, every day we learn new questions. Every week we add them back to production. Don't you have some artificial intelligence that you could use that day then harvest <laughs> that right in for you so you don't have to do that? <laughs> There's some HI, human intelligence, okay, okay. Be, behind the AI. Now, there was a question on uh, Twitter. What if I don't know the questions to ask? Yeah, so the structured language will actually t walk you through them. Okay. Right, so the structured language will never let you ask a question that uh, doesn't parse, uh, but the uh, the natural language question also has support stuff there. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, we make APs too and an AX. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Hardware. <laughs> Neat. So, so, so uh, the, our 11 AX AP is coming. Uh, you guys can all touch it, take pictures. Um, uh, you know, pilots will be starting later this year, uh, and we'll follow the general industry standard. Yes. So. Is that AP going to be able to be firmware updated to the actual standard when it comes out? Um, that is the goal. Yes, okay. absolutely, absolutely. That's why I think you know, to Lee's point, I, I don't see a reason to jump headfirst into this trend. This, there's a lot of confusion out there, uh, especially from the client side and everything. So, uh, so we're going to hold the fort. Um, again, somebody if they're desperate and are leaning in, we may do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we build APs too. Are you guys going to support OWE? Uh, what does that mean? Open wireless encryption. Oh, um, opportunistic. Uh, 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 don't know yet. Don't know yet. Uh, for WPA3, we, our goal is to be. Yeah. Uh, our goal is to be. Um, you know. You know. WFA compliant. Uh, that's something that's coming out in Q4. Um, yeah, so, and, and by the way, somebody asked for it uh, last minute. I'm going to use this. We built the mother lord of a bracket. You know, you guys gave us uh, feedback and, and crap yeah. for, you know, Mist has, uh, you know, crappy brackets. And so we built a bracket that will fit in every environment that uh, we've run into so far in, in one form factor. I, I, never saw, I never saw a bracket last year. Mine didn't come with one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, so, so this bracket works on our existing APs and whatever goes into drywalls, goes into ceiling, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ethernet goes, you know, cleanly, all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, we have an amazing, amazing hardware team. Uh, so and they're shipped with every AP now. They're shipped with every AP. All right. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So, so sorry, brother. Um, but um, again, if I can close this, I have two minutes. All I want to say is, if you're evaluating wireless for your next generation, I want you to know. Mist has arrived, right? This is real. We couldn't be doing some of the largest networks in the world, retail, hospitality, enterprise, like the top social media companies, uh, you know, some of these very, very large enterprises uh, without having the feature set, the functionality, the stability, the scalability, and, and everything that you need in an enterprise class solution. So what I want you all to take away on the internet and, and here uh, that are watching this is, is you deserve to, to experience a POC from us, and uh, we'd love to engage and partner. Uh, if you ask every one of our customers, what is probably the single biggest difference between Mist and every other day vendor, vendor they worked with before, they will tell you Mist was a partner, not a vendor. We, we operate very differently. We operate at a human level, and that's why we don't have customers. We have reference customers. Almost everyone on our, on, our, on our dock is a reference customer. As long as they're legal, we'll allow it, they'll take a call.